Hey everyone, Cody here, and uh, today I'm going to show you a painting that I did. Uh, well, you're going to see it step by step as a, I guess you would call it a tutorial. But anyway, you're going to see a painting that I did today, and it's uh, orange, red, and turquoise. And before I talk about the painting, I'd like to apologize if you see my back. Um, <laughs> Painting outside is definitely a challenge, uh, and that's one thing that I dealt with today when I made this painting. And I have yet to name the painting, but uh, ultimately the end product did vary a little bit from the painting that you'll see actually painted, just because there was something wrong with it at the end that you can't really see in the video. Um, but I had to had to fix it, but the painting in the video actually turned out pretty good, and I liked it uh, before I had to repaint it, but I didn't mind the end version as well. Uh, I don't have a picture of it, so I can't show it to you, but anyway, um, so let's just kind of talk about the painting, and uh, I'll talk about some of the things that have kind of just been going on with me, and what I've learned over the past couple weeks. So... As you can see, I'm painting the background just very simply with uh, the color turquoise. I use, you know, if you don't, if you're new to this channel, I use gloss enamel, and it's basically house paint. But uh, I'm starting off with a turquoise color here, just because I already knew that I wanted to do a turquoise, orange, and red painting, um, and I figured it'd be easiest to start with the darkest color as the background. And, I don't know, it's a good color, this color. It's called Rare Turquoise, and it's kind of on the darker side, but I, I really have come to appreciate the color itself. And I, I didn't used to be a fan of turquoise before. Um, I think I've said that before, but, uh, you know, I've come, to, I've come to like it. Like, before I started painting, I didn't, I don't really care about turquoise, but after I started using it and kind of researching it, I've kind of grown kind of fond of it. But, uh, so the first thing I want to tell you, or I'll talk about, is this, I guess you would call it a squeegee or a scraper. Um, if, and I'm going to come back to the type of painting that I've been doing, but uh, yeah, this is the orange. But that squeegee that you saw is actually for silk screen uh, printing. So I found it on Amazon. Actually, my wife did. She bought it for me. Um, as kind of an early anniversary gift. Um, that's pretty much all I asked for is stuff for painting. So <laughs> I don't know if that's good or bad or whatever, but uh, I asked her for this this giant scraper that I saw on Amazon. It was like 39, 30, it's like 39 inches. Um, and anyway, I went to use it on this painting and realized that it was too stiff and too flat, like it's too wide for the painting. So I couldn't really get the paint to to spread. You can see that it it pulled in on the edges, but like even if I pushed down on the center, it wouldn't do it. And, it, and I mean, the design looks kind of cool, don't get me wrong, but it's not the design I'm, I was going for. Um, so this was actually the first day of me using this scraper. So I kind of learned my lesson with it, uh, and what I can and can't do. So I'm pretty sure that I would be able to, I'm sure I can use it for flat paintings, like on canvas by itself, or maybe even, uh, smaller paintings that don't bow in as much. But I found that, uh, and I was so excited for the scraper too. Like I, I really wanted it. I saw it on another video and I can actually link to the video that I saw because I think that that person deserves, you know, credit because I asked them where they got it or what it was and how they found it. And they told me, and then I went out and got one. So uh, it was a guy that did like a, a black and white or sorry, a black and red painting that was kind of like a Rothko, I guess, um, but, uh, or I guess Richter, whatever, a lot of it's similar. But anyway, I, you know, I saw the scraper in another video 
I asked them where what it was. They told me. I was like, oh, that's super cool. So I had my wife buy me one. And uh, I was so excited to use this scraper. And then I found out that, it, you know, it was too big. So um, I did make some progress with it here. But again, it, it wasn't it wasn't exactly doing what I wanted it to. So you'll see that it, it creates an interesting effect. It's not bad. Um, but again, it's not exactly what I was going for. So, um, so one thing I wanted to talk about while, while I'm kind of really just scraping this painting is, you know, a lesson that I recently kind of was reminded of is doing something because you love it and not because you're trying to use it as like a ends to a mean, I guess, or a means to an end. As in, like, if you love painting, you know, paint because you love painting, not because you're trying to achieve something like fame or, you know, fortune or whatever it is. I mean, there are some people who seem to make quite a bit of money painting, but I'm not one of them. <laughs> um, and I'm not sure what it is that I'm doing wrong. Maybe it's my intent or it was. But, you know, when I started, it was just all about painting and I just wanted to paint and that's all I wanted to do. And now I, you know, paint for money. And it's like I got to the point where I just wanted to paint for the money. And so I was not doing what I loved. But on top of that, I was also trying to paint um, all these different styles because I thought that other uh, everybody else would like the styles, not because I would like them. So, you know, I was doing all these things that I thought everybody else would like and not what I would like. So I learned a few things over the last few weeks and kind of months, I guess. And that's just that, you know, you, if you're going to, if you're doing it for the wrong reasons, it's ultimately going to fail. You, you might win on the short term, but you're not going to be happy with yourself, you know? And so when I realized that I, um, it kind of changed my perspective on what I was doing with the painting. You know, I wasn't painting because I loved it. I was painting because I was just trying to, to be noticed, I guess. But, uh, yeah. So that was, that was something I was reminded of recently. And I think it's a good lesson because even if you like something, as soon as you start doing it only for, you know, money, and not because you enjoy it. It's like, as soon as you're not making money, you're not happy anymore. And I was getting to that point where I wasn't happy doing this anymore because they weren't selling. And uh, I had to be reminded that like, if I enjoy the process, then the money shouldn't matter, right? It shouldn't be about the money. It should just be about me doing what I love. So again, like I said, I was, I was reminded of that and, um, yeah, I've actually decided to give a couple of my paintings away because I just don't want it to be about that, you know, but anyway, I was, uh, I just think it's a good lesson to remember that if you, if you're in it for just the money or because you're trying to achieve some kind of goal and not because you enjoy that thing or because you're trying to provide value, Ultimately, it's going to collapse. So I would just say keep that in mind. Now, let's come back to the painting. I, looking at it now, I kind of don't like that I scraped the red th that direction. I kind of wish I had kept it the same direction that the orange had gone because I was liking that that look that the, the orange and the turquoise had. Um, and it's funny because when you're in the moment, you just think of what to do next and you don't really stand back and look and I could but in trying to film it because it was super windy actually today and you'll you probably see that in my hair and uh, you'll probably see some leaves blow on here because uh, it actually got windier it wasn't windy when I first started and then as as I was painting it got windier and windier so yeah that was fun but um you'll notice that I, I stopped using that squeegee just because I realized that it was not working out. It was just too 
too large for the size painting that I was doing. So I put the, the squeegee aside and I switched over to uh, that. The thing that you saw was an acrylic sheet that I got at Home Depot. So the acrylic sheet was like 15 bucks. It's, uh, I think it was one foot by two foot. Uh, and it's, yeah, it's literally just a sheet of acrylic. Uh, and I got it because like, it, because it bends so much. And I really like the acrylic sheet, actually. I think I want to get like a bigger one and maybe just have someone cut it for me. So it's a little, so it's not so wide. I guess. And then this right here, this is kind of my go-to tool right here. Uh, this is just corrugated plastic. So the corrugated plastic, uh, you again, actually, I just got it at Home Depot. And I got it in the same spot, actually. So you can find the, the corrugated plastic and the acrylic sheet in the same area. So here, I mean, I've gone over all three colors, but it's really heavily red. So I had to balance it back out. So I decided to go back over the turquoise. Um, and it starts to make the solid lines, but it's not scraped as heavily this time. Like I didn't push as hard. Um, so that's why you don't see it like being scraped downward and kind of like almost cutting into the canvas. So this one is, uh, that's why you see these really thick lines because I'm, I'm drawing the paint out, but I'm not scraping it very like as hard. It's probably like medium pressure. So I would say like heavy pressure is scraping it so that you almost don't have any paint pulling off. And then medium pressure is what you see now where you can pull it, um, almost from end to end. And then light pressure is basically, you're just skimming the surface so you leave a lot of paint behind and if you ever decide to do like a scrape painting like this um you know you you kind of have to do it to to understand what i'm talking about with with that um now uh, just in talking about paint and and uh marketing actually there's something i was thinking about with marketing the other day and this is you know, how do you market yourself in a very competitive environment? And uh, this is something that I've been challenged, finding it as a challenge recently, because there's a lot of ways you could do it. You can make YouTube videos. You can, you know, go out and get into galleries. You can get into, you know, newspapers or articles. You can uh, promote on Instagram. You can have your own blog. You can do a lot of different things. And I've been thinking and kind of testing a lot of different things lately. And uh, it seems like a lot of people seem to be really successful on Instagram, but I can't seem to find success on it. I mean, even if I post similar photos to other people, they'll, they'll end up getting like 20,000 followers and I only have like a thousand something. So... I'm honestly not sure what the what the trick is to marketing. If anybody knows, you know, let me know. Um, but I have found that a lot of my buyers found my work because of YouTube. And I think that's interesting because some of the people who have bought my paintings were people who actually would have made their own, but then they saw like the the work involved. And they didn't buy. And I think that's powerful because I was thinking about this. And, and I started like doing some blog posts and some artist interviews. You know, I did a video about that a while back. You know, thinking like, oh, that, that's going to take off. But really my blog is kind of a ghost town. And I think that people do read still. But at the same time, you know, we're kind of moving into this era of video. And I, I mean, we have been for a few years now, but if you really think about kind of where people's attention is going, you know, it's, it's mostly going to video. And so because of that, like we can try to, you know, just keep writing and stuff. But I think because of, I think because art 
is a visual thing. I think that because painting is such a visual thing that if you just try to do like a blog post, right, it's not going to work as well because that's text, right? You can put videos, you can, you know, put some videos or images into a blog post, but really it doesn't have the same effect. You aren't going to get that same, I don't know how to explain it, the same effect that you would by having a video like this where you get to see the whole process, right? And I was thinking about this for promoting art as well. Just, uh, you know, not only for like tutorials like this where, you know, I'm just kind of talking and um, you can see that this painting is hella unbalanced. <laughs> I'm going to, you'll, you'll see in a minute here that uh, basically just going to go over the whole thing again. But, um, but like for, for promotion of art and stuff like that, video makes a lot of sense. Um, and so does pictures because, I mean, art is highly, is a very visible thing, right? If anybody was going to buy art, and I've, I've bought art, it's funny because I thought that if, if I was an artist, I was like, why would I need to, to buy art, right? Because if I'm an artist, I can just make my art. But I've realized that because there's so many different unique styles out there, that there are other people's art that I've, that I've found that I really like. And, um, but you know, you, since art is very visual, if you were trying to market your art to someone to buy it, they have to be able to kind of see that themselves, right? They have to be able to kind of picture that piece in their home. And I think video is very important because video allows you to see the work that was involved, but it also gives you a better understanding of how it came to be. Right? I think that that's really fascinating. I've watched other artists and, you know, watch their painting videos. And it's funny because it's like, because it'll look so simple, right? But it's not necessarily so. Like this painting, I mean, you could look at the, the finished painting. And again, even the one that you see in this video is not the final product, just because I had to go over it again, because uh, there was a gash in it. And uh, like, not a physical like cut through the painting, but just a gash in the paint. Um, that I had to fix and it, it made me have to go over the whole thing again. But, um, you know, video makes a lot of sense because you kind of get a story with it, right? And even if I were just to tell you the story, it's a lot easier than you having to sit there and read it, right? And so I think that for for anybody who makes art or really does anything, video really does make a lot of sense these days for for anything, you know, really, because a lot of our attention is going to video. I don't know if it's just because we're getting lazier or video is easier to consume because it's a little more entertaining than a block of text. But, uh, you know, the truth is, is that I think that's just the way that we're going. And so what I would say is if you can use video because it's becoming only more popular and, you know, YouTube is getting so much traffic and stuff like that. And you know, I just think that it helps tell the story of your art, you know, if you sell art. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that's really it. I didn't know what to talk about with this video because you get to see the whole thing by itself. And, and I really wish I could have kept this version of the painting because I like it. But the, the ending version was good, too. Um, it just had a little more thin lines in it. So it still turned out pretty good. But, uh, I mean, that's it, guys. So, you got to see the painting. You got to see it done. And I uh, hope you enjoyed it. You can check out more paintings on my site or other videos. And uh, that's it. I hope that you really enjoyed. And, uh, yeah. Go ahead and have a nice, awesome... Oh, there's that gash. <laughs> anyway, have a good rest of your day, guys. Take care.